Wood, come on in, have a seat, and we'll get started tonight. Uh, thank you for being here, being part of our Wednesday night service. We have several announcements before we uh, are get into our devotional time together. Uh, those that we know of, uh, Lex Kane is in the local hospital, and Jim Wilson's also in the local hospital. Uh, we need to also remember Betty White in our prayers. Pantry item for this week is rice. Uh, earlier this week, we heard from J.T. Beard, and he reported they had, that had 13 baptisms and performed two weddings so far in their trip to Guyana this time. Uh, and if you've seen uh, Brother Greg's Facebook account, you'll notice that he and Sarah are there in Thailand, are, uh, Thailand and they are, they are there safely and should be returning home first of next week. Uh, reminder for the sixth grade and below, there will be a trip to the pumpkin patch at Blue Mountain this coming Saturday. Uh, the bus will leave at about one o'clock uh, on Saturday. Uh, all children that are going need to have a chaperone with them. If you need any more information or if you, have, uh, you need to sign up so that Aaron will know how many folks are going, there's a list in the foyer, or ask uh, Aaron or Cassie about more information concerning that. The Golden Circle also has a trip Saturday uh, to the Ames Plantation. They plan to leave Saturday morning at 8.30. So if you uh, need information about that, see Brother Jim about that tonight. Bible trivia is tonight at Snowdown. So we have a, quite a few of our young people away tonight. If you would like to help provide a uh, going away gift for the Purtles, uh, if you want to contribute to that, see Michelle English or Allison Gross. Uh, Freed Hardeman Associates will meet tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in the Annex. And for tonight, only the 6th grade classroom will go to the, to the TAC. 6th grade tonight goes to the TAC. That's all of our announcements. Uh, please join in in our singing. You might go ahead and mark number 939, number 939. This will be used as a song of encouragement following the lesson in a few minutes. 939. Before our prayer and scripture reading, we'll do number 351. 351. My precious Savior,
us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this day and all the blessings that You've blessed us with. And Father, we thank Thee for Thy Son, Jesus, who came to this earth and died on the cross that we might have forgiveness of our sins. And Father, forgive us of our sins. And Father, we thank Thee for the opportunity we have to come out tonight and study another portion of Thy Word and sing songs to Thee. And Father, just be with this congregation here at Boonville and bless each member and grant let us grow in number and in spirit. And Father, be with the elders and the deacons and just grant them the wisdom that they need to make the right decisions for the congregation. Father, be with Greg and Danielle and JT on their mission trip and watch over them and keep them safe and let much good do with their spreading the gospel. And Father, just be with all those that are sick and afflicted. Just bless them and let them get back to their normal walks of life. And be with all those people, Father, that's been infected, affected by the floods and, and the hurricanes that we've had lately and just continue to bless them and be with all those people in California that's, that's lost their lives and have lost their homes and their businesses. And Father, just go with us this night and watch over us and bless us and all this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture reading will come from Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were, fi for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become a fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. As he was reading Mark 16 through 18 of chapter 1, I thought that I needed to make a small confession to y'all tonight. I did something last night that I just do not do. And I noticed that Amanda's not here, and I've ridiculed her a lot for doing this. I do not highlight in my Bible. You know, I've always considered that the Holy Word of God. It was inspired, and I don't feel like marking in it or highlighting in it. And Amanda always did, and I always pick fun at her and whatever. Because we've been in classes together for over 30 years. But I highlighted in my Bible last night, so I've made a big step forward, I guess, some people would say. I want to talk to you a little bit about Jesus as we were reading that if we were talking it today jesus was walking down the beach and he saw three men fishing and he asked them to follow him why did they follow him would you have followed jesus i got to admit that i probably wouldn't have you had lived on this earth during the time that Jesus lived and he walked along and asked you to follow him would you have followed him his family was poor people rejected his miracle birth can you imagine growing up in that time it's probably hard enough in this time but an illegitimate child how they ridiculed him how they ridiculed Mary, I'm sure well, the Bible doesn't tell us that, but you know they did. He held no ruling position in the community, in the Jewish religion, in the synagogue. He held no ruling position. His friends were poor. They were outcast. They were fishermen. He ate with sinners. Now just imagine, he wasn't the type of person that your mother or their mothers would want their boys to be around. Would you have followed him? His character was in dispute. None of the Jewish leaders believed him. 
After all, he was proclaiming through his actions at that time to be the Son of God, the Messiah. I'm sure a lot of people thought he was crazy. He had no academic recognition. He wrote no books. He wrote no letters. Probably couldn't even read and write unless it was by the will of God. The only thing that we have in the Bible that says anything about that is he got down on the sand and scribbled with his finger. We don't know if he was writing something or what. Would you have followed a man like that? At the end of his life, he went through a spell of popularity, of course, but at the end of his life, he wasn't very popular at all. The Jewish people wanted to kill him because of what he was saying. He had 12 apostles. One of them betrayed him, sold him. One of them denied him three times, wouldn't even admit to knowing him. The other ten left him. They run. All of that being true, why did so many decide to follow him after he was put to death? Why would so many people decide to follow him later that wouldn't follow him when he was performing miracles, when he was doing wonderful things, and, but they decided to follow him after he was dead? I think it's because of his perfect, sinless life. I think it's because of his wisdom with the parables that he told and how he could teach and people could understand what he's talking about. And of course his miracles. He raised people from the dead. He gave his apostles the power to raise people from the dead. His resurrection. He was resurrected from the dead himself even though they had put guards in front of the tomb so he couldn't he was resurrected he was gone and he walked 40 days on this earth and no telling how many people saw him they knew that he had been put to death he had been crucified but yet he is walking this earth you could even see the scar in his side where the roman soldier had stuck him with a spear thomas didn't much believe it was him until he saw that scar and he knew it was Then I think one of the main reasons that people decided to follow Jesus was because he sent the Holy Spirit. You know, he told his apostles that the Comforter would come, and after the Comforter had come, he would tell them what to do. That's why we have this Bible, I believe. I've been talking about people 2,000 years ago, but I want to ask you tonight, do you have the courage to follow Jesus? Do you want to spend forever in heaven with him? Or better yet, do you want to not spend eternity in hell? The Bible says hell is full of pain. Hell is full of suffering. Hell is darkness. Darkness forever. By yourself hurting and darkness. Would you consider following Jesus tonight? We can have eternity with him. You know, and having an eternity with him hasn't got anything to do with being here in church on Wednesday night. It doesn't have anything to do with being a regular church attender. The Bible says in Matthew 7, and for sake of time, I'm not going to read these scriptures, but they're there, and you can read them, Matthew 7, 21 through 23, it says, not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I know we as good church of Christ, we want to think that that's talking about the religious denominations of the world that calling on him Lord, Lord. But you know, you've got to remember one thing. 
They weren't any religious denomination when he told this to his followers. He was speaking to his followers. And he told them that some of them was going to say, I've done miracles in your name. I've taught. I've done a lot of stuff. And he's going to say, I never knew you. Why? He explained that we've got to keep his commandments. He wants us to do what he told us to do. We sometimes today, and I'm talking to myself as much as I am each and every one of you, do we even know what his commandments are? Do we know what that is? Coming to church on Wednesday nights is a great thing. The Bible tells us one time, and the Bible fell not to assemble yourself together as a matter of some is, more as the day is approaching, but the reason it's there is that was time of the uh, persecutions of the Christians, and some of them weren't wanting to meet because they could be found, and, and, and he told them to, to fail not to assemble yourself together, and then we learn in Acts that the churches met on the first day of the week. And it's wonderful, and Christians should be in church every time that we can be in church, but that is not going to get us to heaven. He explained in 1 John 2, 4, He that saith, I know him, but don't keep my commandments, is a liar, and the truth's not in him. Now, I'm not quoting these scriptures. I'm paraphrasing these scriptures. I'm not good enough to quote them. But if you say you know him and you don't keep his commandments, he said the truth's not in you. What are his commandments that we must keep? Well, I believe the basic commandments are we got to believe. We got to believe that he is the only son of God. John 3:18. We got to repent. Repent means be truly sorry that we have lived in sin, that we've committed sin, Luke 13, 3. We've got to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We've got to do that in front of people. We've got to not be ashamed of him because he certainly doesn't want us to be ashamed of him, Romans 10, 9. we got to be baptized in water submersed 1 Peter 3 21 one of my favorite verses about baptism it says baptism does now save us when we get baptized we're putting on the blood of Jesus Christ that's where we meet the blood and that's when our sins are forgiven but you know all of those things probably most of us have done. But there's one other thing that the Bible teaches that maybe a lot of us don't do. We got to be faithful unto death. And I will give you a crown of life, Revelations 2.10. Be faithful unto death. Keep his commandments unto death. That's all we got to do. Do what he says. If you've done the first three of those things, I say to you, here is water. What's keeping you from being baptized? If you've done all four of those things, first four things, but you're not living faithful, I say to you, why not turn your life around tonight? If you want to go to heaven and you're not meeting these qualifications, why don't you come now as we sing the invitation song.
As our teachers make their way out to get prepared for their classes, we'll sing number 853, number 853. 